Okay. Okay. So, you know a talk's going to be good when the speaker needs two laptops to do it. So, you'd be pleased you stuck around. Um, our next talk is entitled uh, The New Brain, Technology and Interaction for Human Accessibility. And please put your hands together for Francisco from Mu Arts. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Francisco. You can call me Chico if you want. It's easier. Um, so, this talk... I, I will talk about the new brain. Uh, there's a new brain around and is mediated by technology and interaction. Uh, what is human accessibility? Human accessibility is the field that develops technology for people that has, have disabilities and they need technology to, for them to get to a normal stage of uh, accessibility, of assessing uh, the world. Um, this is working, but I can use this. Okay, so this is the brain. Everyone knows this fellow. Everyone has a brain. Uh, and what is the brain? The brain is organized by layers of organization. So you have the first layer, the biology layer. You have the chemistry layer. You have the anatomy layer, the ele electric layer that I will talk about more uh, during this talk the cognition layer and cognitive layer, and then you have the behavioral layer, that is the last one. It's not working? I can use this, no problem. Um, so the biology layer, everyone knows that the, the, the cell, the neuron, is the biological fundamental uh, unit of the brain. Then you have the chemistry layer, so you have neurotransmitters that go through one neuron to another neuron, so the communication can go through uh, in the brain. Then you have the electric layer. In the electric layer, every time there's uh, communication in the brain, there's an action potential, potential of electricity going around the neuron. So the, the, the neuron gets depolarized uh, to a, a, a charge of minus 70, minus 80 microvolts. And that's the electric layer of the brain. Then you, you have the an, 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 atom, an atomic layer of the brain that is responsible for the organization. Each part of the brain has its own function. So the frontal lobe is the executive function, you have the parietal lobe, motor function, and so on. So according to the area of the brain, you know that you have a specific function happening on that part of the brain. And then, I will just show you a small video so you can understand uh, how the electricity goes according to each part of the brain. So, to the communication to happen, there's ions of potassium and uh, calcium that gets in the, the, the cell and the, the, connect, the connection happens um, inside the brain. And in the end of the cell, you have the neurotransmitters that are released on the synaptic uh, cliff and then they go through uh, to another cell and then the communication is electric and chemical. In the end you have the cognitive layer so all the processes so the electric, the chemical and the anatomical layer allow these processes, intangible processes to happen, the psychological process to happen and in the end you have the behavior so all of these layers uh, exist for the behavior to happen. Um, what is EEG and electroencephalography? That is the technology that I'm, that I'm going to explain and show you today. The EEG is a device like this with sensors that can capture the electri electric layer and the electricity of the brain when you're thinking. How can the, the electrode capture the electricity? So you have electrode in the scalp and all the neurons that are perpendicular to the scalp, pyramidal neurons and that are parallel to each other, that are the neurons that can be uh, cocked, the electricity that are generated by, by those uh, neurons can be cocked by, by the electrode. Uh, this is the data that you have, so it's raw data, no meaning, and you need good algorithms to decode this data so you can understand what the, pe what the people are thinking at a certain moment. Um, you can extract uh, some information from the signal uh, like frequency and frequency is related to some processes so low frequencies 
like delta and theta are related to low cognitive processes, are related to very calm states like sleep and relaxation. Higher frequencies like alpha and beta are related to higher cognitive states, very excitement if someone is, is anxious and so on. If you link this frequency to a topographic map, so if you link the elect electric layer of the organization of the brain to the anatomical layer of organization of the brain, you can understand what is happening in the brain. So for instance, in this example, you have the beta and high beta with loads of activity on this side. And we know that this area is responsible for language and memory. So I can, I can risk saying that this guy at that moment was talking or having some memory recolle recoll recollection at, the, uh, at that moment, because they have high, high activity on high frequencies like beta and high beta. So, what is the new layer that I believe that exists in the brain now? Is the technological layer. The technological layer allows people to use EEG, so technology, to have a new side of organization that allows them to have more accessibility to things. Uh, and this is possible with a brain-computer interface. A brain-computer interface is a wearable EEG that is easy and more wearable to use than a normal EEG. These are two, two examples of a uh, brain-computer interface. I work with, with both. The first one is Muse, is a Canadian company. They just have four sensors in the forehead. And the other one is Emotive Epoch. They have 14 sensors. Um, and the first one is dry electrodes, it's more easy to use. The second one is semi-dry, you have to put a drop of water or salt water in the electrodes. It's more difficult to use, but has more, more electrodes so you can have more metrics of the brain. Our company, New Arts, has developed two headsets. Has developed one, that is this hat, with just one forehead sensor and two references that are two earrings, because you need references to close the electrical loop. And then we developed a modular uh, headset with 19 electrodes that you can use each module according to the metric that you want to use. We have main metrics, we have emotional engagement metrics, we have concentration metrics, and then we have motor metrics, thinking left and right. Um, here is an example of the dashboard. So you can send real-time data to a dashboard. You can see how people were using the, the headset, how the data was flowing around the session, how they were using and how which parts of the brain were more activated or not. You can also plot in real time the data of the brain while people are interacting with a product like a bottle or any device. And you could, in this case, we were plotting emotional engagement of the two people engaging with a, with a product. Um, applications of this technology. So you can have entertainment applications uh, like this toy car that we is a use case that we developed with our solution. We used Emotive Epoch and we used our motor imagery solution. So Horacio was thinking left and right and he was controlling the car to the left and to the right. was trying to stop it. He has to blink the eyes to stop the car. Music. Another application, another use case. Uh, music Tech Fest is a partner that we usually work with. And this is a, an experiment that we did where a blind singer, I will move forward a little bit. A blind singer was, was singing and at the same time controlling some sounds and some visuals with the brain. I will let you see.
Smart fashion is a new field of brain computer interaction where clothes can change according to your emotion. I have a cloth line called Vision Quest where the hat controls LED panel uh, and the pattern of the LED panel and the colors according to the emotion. I will show you here an example. Sorry. Okay, I have to go faster. So AV performance, audiovisual performances is another example. Uh, we have a performance called Brain in Box. So uh, a writer was sit inside a box and he had seven layers of concentration and each layer was related to a phrase, pre-recorded phrase. So you have to concentrate to the first layer to project the first phrase, concentrate a little bit more to the second layer, second threshold to project the second phrase. The light and the sounds are controlled by the emotional engagement metric. So consciously it was controlling the projection of the phrases and unconscious, unconsciously because it was emotional, emotional engagement it was controlling the lights and the sounds. Uh, for all of this technology we have machine learning that has to be taught uh, by the user so the, 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 the algorithm can decode what they're thinking, but also the user has to train a little bit how to use and to interact with the technology. It's an example of, neuro, of a neurofeedback session when the user is training in real time how to control the device and he has a positive feedback every time he can achieve the threshold that he wants to achieve to control an external device. Uh, this is the view of the technician that is helping him. He's, viewing the, he's, viewing, he's seeing the, the brain data in real time. And this is the, the uh, scheme of the loop of interaction of a neurofeedback session. So in real time, the brain data goes to the computer, computer processes the data, the technician sees, he helps the, the user, and then the, the loop of, of information is closed. Um, now I would like to make a demo of the technology. I think I have more or less five minutes. Uh, does someone want to come to the stage and try the device, Muse, and then, do you want to come? And then our software solution. So what are we trying to do here? I want to show you the software, the prototype software working. Do, do you want to come? Yep. Okay, so can you turn to the, to the, to the crowd? Can you take the, the glasses? Sorry, a little bit. I will put this here. So this is Muse. He has four sensors, and we are trying to capture the activation of that sensor. So every time it's activated, frontal lobe, uh, the video and the sound that is going to be played are going to be more hectic and more quick. The, every time it relaxes, the video and the sound will be more quiet and will stop when he achieves the lower state of theta. So your goal is to listen to the sound, see the video, and then try to relax with a, bre with a breath to try to calm down the video and the sound. So this is the prototype software. Can you listen to the sound? Okay, this is the audio feedback. The video is this one. Let me see. Okay. I just have to put here the video, sorry. Let me go to the to my pen. I forgot the pen. It's here. So you can train a little bit with the audio, with audio feedback. 
and you can see on the graph, every time the graph grows, goes up, you are relaxing. Every time the graph goes down, you are more excited. And I will put the video here and you can control the visuals of the, of the video. Can you, you can put the glasses. If you put the glasses like here, yes, perfect. <laughs> okay, let's see the video. sound is easier to get to understand how the, the concept try to use the breath perfect now try to activate try, try to concentrate on the image try to think a little bit more to activate the brain Let's see how the graph goes. I will split the, the screen so it's easier. So one is here, the other one will be here. So try to notice that the graph goes up, you're relaxed. The graph goes down, you're not. When you're relaxed, the image stops. When you're not relaxed, now we'll let you play a little bit with your brain. I don't know if you have any question. You can keep you can stay here playing and I can answer the questions. <laughs> so let's see if the question is a difficult question or not. <laughs> oh, okay. If it's a difficult question, the graph will go down. <laughs> I'll come running around with the mic guys as well, if you do have any questions. Do you wanna ask? Can I ask a question? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I will stop I will stop the um, the device I can take this off uh, one of the things that I wanted to ask actually I want to ask a bunch of stuff because I'm, I'm a cognitive science master student uh -huh. this is fascinating for me um, I noticed like three things when I was looking up Muarts mm -hmm. was that it, it, for me it sounds groundbreaking three levels like culturally because it provides like a new way of a cultural expression like in you know, arts and music yep. and uh, uh, from the cognitive science perspective I think it's fascinating mainly the fact that the neural feedback is using machine learning to do, like, instead of like doing like hours and hours of training you can do it apparently very quickly from the videos that I saw so it's Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And the you, if I understood correctly, the data from like let's say you train people on that neural feedback to so that people can control cars or music or whatever, and that data gets stored. And your idea is to transform that through a decentralized application, in in a way such that people are owners of their own brain data. Yeah, that's the thing. The that you saw that on the website. Now, the thing was, we are planning to use blockchain on the, on the, in, our, in our company, in our startup, and on, on our solution. Uh, this is a kind of way of fighting a little bit the, our competition, because our competition use, uses the, the user's brain data for their algorithms, and that's it. And the thing about blockchain, our idea is that you can track how your data is used, 
Imagine that you say that, okay, you can use my data for your algorithms, but you cannot say, sell my data to a company that comes and wants to buy 100 uh, users mail data. Uh, you can track that because with that, with blockchain, I can guarantee you that the data is yours and you can know. Another thing, another idea of using blockchain is that we are trying to create an ecosystem for uh, universities and labs that they are the ones that, that they create the algorithms. We just code the algorithms and then create the application. Uh, you can choose as the user which algorithms to use because um, in neuroscience, there's uh, mainly in this area, there's some, um, it's not doubt, but there's companies or there's universities that claim to have one type of, of metric that other companies or other, other universities say that they are not truth because they don't believe or they want to see the data, whatever. Uh, you are, uh, as the user, you can know from where my algorithm came. If it came from Yale, if it came from your university. So the user also knows uh, who's the one that is uh, saying that the data that you are showing is correct because with blockchain you have two sides you know to where your data goes and you know from where your algorithm comes so that's the idea thank you hi uh, so my question is um, from a technical perspective um, how hard is it to start playing with stuff like this with like um, ECG data, what's the minimal setup you recommend or interesting starter projects? Just so an can, can overall you, idea. Can you repeat the question? So, so uh, fr from a technical, from a developer standpoint, yeah. what's the minimal setup to start playing with stuff like this, with ECG oh. data, okay. like the um, hardware, so the this is, software, etc.? This is the most basic one. So it's Muse, then Max. Max MSP is a signal prototyping software. So you can, with uh, objects and, and linking objects, you can do all the processing of the, of, of the brain data and then link with a server to anything that you want. You can link to Jitter, that's the video. You can link to audio. You can link to IoT. So basic set to start, Muse, Max MSP, and that's it. And uh, on the machine learning side, mm -hmm. um, is there a lot done already for you? Like, or do you have to do it from, from the beginning, from scratch? Like recognizing patterns and recognizing interesting stuff going on in the brain. Do you have to do it all from scratch? Or are, is there a lot of stuff already out there that you can use? So our path, the, the company, I started a company in 2012. So we started using Muse and Emotive Epoch. They have their own uh, machine learning batteries and their own algorithms and we started doing use cases with their devices, their softwares and uh, Macs. Now that we develop our own uh, device we have to do everything from scratch. We, we don't want to have our device and then go to use their, their algorithms. For that we need and New Arts works close related to NeuroBuse that is a, a neurofeedback and neuropsychiatric clinic so we use the pool of subjects that they have there to train the algorithms. So in the beginning, we used their, their and our competition uh, sets. Now we are creating our own. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. And now that you're doing the, the that you have to do it from scratch, do you use Python? Like for the machine learning side of it? We are using Java, and then we are using the Intel Movideos. I don't know if you have heard about it. That is a 16-core. Uh, board from Intel that can run machine learning and it works in C, that one, but we use Java and C to, to code the batteries on the board. Okay guys, that's all the time we have unfortunately, but if you have any questions for Francisco, I'm sure it'd be